every once in a while you run across a deal that you just can't say no to, and that's what happened to me today. Um, I'm about to show you the biggest haul I've ever had in the history of buying anything, I think, as far as number of things I bought. And I would have to say the best deal I ever got as far as the financial, uh, the cost for what I've got here. I'm going to show the whole bunch, and you can take a guess, those of you who know board games pretty well, as to what this might have cost. Um, and then I'll tell you what I paid for it. And then um, I'll give you the story behind what happened in a minute. Uh, I'm going to need to do something with the camera because there's no way I can fit everything in this tiny frame. So I'm going to back that camera off uh, a mile or so. I'm going to show you the, uh, I don't know, 20 games that I got, something like that. All in one haul, all from one guy um, off of Craigslist. And I'll tell you the story in just a minute. So stay tuned. This is going to be interesting, I think. Okay. Thank you. And I'm back. So the whole thing started with the game Blood Rage, which is actually a game that I own and I've never played. So the, I saw on Craigslist that somebody was selling Blood Rage. He had originally listed for $60, but with the Sons of Asgard, the Mystics of Midgard, and the five-player expansion, all for $40. And I thought, well, that's a pretty good deal. So I wrote him. This is on Craigslist. I wrote him and said, hey, I'm interested. Um, would you be willing to sell me that for 40 And he said, yes, I would. I said, great. So my thought was I would take the three expansions, which I, I gather to be worth about 20 bucks each, maybe a little bit more, maybe 30 for the five-player expansion. I'm not sure. But my thought was to take those and sell this Blood Rage for 40 and then basically get these for free. This guy was local, so I could pick it up. And then he wrote me and he said, I have other games too if you're interested. I'd be willing to sell you. And he sends me this big list of like 20 games. He said, I'm willing to sell them to you. He just bought a desk. He's trying to make some room. I get the feeling he hasn't played many of these. And based on what I've seen so far, most of these, I haven't opened Blood Rage yet, but most of these look like they never were played. Things were not punched. Uh, in some cases, things were bagged, but I do that. I, I usually open stuff up and bag it and, you know, pop the boards off. Okay, this uh this will tell you something right here. This is the uh, this is the game, and uh, nothing's. This is brand new. The cards have not been opened yet. The figurines are going to be brand new. Yeah, this this game is essentially opened but never played, never punched. Brand new game, and I, mean, I think that's going to be the case with a lot of this stuff. <clears throat> so if you never play, if you never played Blood Rage, there's no way you could have opened these and done anything with those. So I'm going to guess that Blood Rage. Let's see, I'm going to put it right about here. Let me put it over here. Can you still see me? And the three expansions for Blood Rage. The uh, Gods of Asgard. The Mystics. And the five-player expansion, which I'm not going to try to... Let me just put it here, I think. Um, I'm going to guess none of these were played. So hopefully you can still see me. Uh, this I may be changing this stuff around as we go here, through here because there's a lot of stuff to show you. <clears throat> he threw in something called the game, which I'd never heard of. This has got French instructions, but he said he had the English instructions. He included them. I just don't know where they went. They're out in my car someplace. So, uh, But you can see, I think you can see that this has never been opened. So I heard about the game. Interesting name for a game. That's the game. Put that there. Okay. Let me bounce that off without having a tip. Tricky, tricky, tricky. I might have to speak up a little bit or boost this thing. Then he threw in this game, and I never heard of it before. It's uh, by it's called Street Soccer. Never heard of Street Soccer before. Um, and but it looks interesting. It's got little meeples. It looks like he actually did play this one. Comes with a board. Comes with meeples, and they each one has like a little number on the on the dude. A, a die. And then a couple of uh, things that I, I guess represent the soccer ball. I don't know what that is. And then you've, you've got red and yellow dudes. And uh, the instructions are in uh, four different languages at least. French, uh, 
don't know. It's hard to say. But I've got this one for instruction. So I'm sure I'll get this one looks like a fun little game that you just play. It's kind of a, probably a filler game, to say the least. You get the little board like this. And if you oh it's almost it's magnetic. Well, it's not magnetic. Um, so <clears throat> that's kind of cool. This could be a long video, by the way, I think. I'm just gonna put this down behind Blood Rage for now. Well, I'm gonna put the game on there. I'm also gonna put the five player expansion because you've seen those now. You, you know they're here, they're behind Blood Rage. But as I pile this stuff up, you're, not, you're gonna be lucky to see me and you might, you know, that may be a good thing. Let's go to this big one over here. <clears throat> Never heard of this one either, but I looked it up. It's called uh, Dungeons and Drag Dragons Temple of Elemental Evil board game. It is big, big. Uh, haven't opened it up yet, but you know, I, I met the guy in a parking lot of a gas station. My wife came and one of my boys. Um, well, just tell you, the rules are still in the plastic. Looks like he bagged everything up. But the cards, again, never been out of the plastic. So, it looks like he punched things but never played it. And there's a lot of stuff in here. I, I don't know everything that's in here, but there's a lot of stuff here. It looks pretty cool. Um, don't know. Question now is what am I going to do with all these games because I don't think I can store all of them. This is for one to five players ages 14 and up. Let me check something here. If this wasn't on properly. I like to light it up with the back. That's the back like that. So, go like this. Uh... It's another big game, and it's as big as Blood Rage, maybe maybe bigger. If you've heard of these games, I have not heard of this one. I looked it up briefly. I didn't look up all of them, but there's a lot of stuff with this. 32 illustrated interlocking dungeon tiles. 42 plastic heroes and monsters, including the large black dragon. A rule book, an adventure book, 200 encounter monster and treasure cards. 280 markers and tokens and a 20-sided die. Uh, it is for 14 and up. It takes 60 minutes to play and 1 to 5 players, so... I'll cover the Temple of, Ultim of Elemental Evil when you dare to face it. Grab your gear and join the adventure. In the Temple of Evil of Elemental Evil board game, you play a heroic adventurer. With amazing abilities, spells, and magic weapons, you must explore the dungeons beneath the Sword Coast, where you will fight monsters, overcome hazards, and find treasure if you're lucky. Are you ready for adventure? Sure, why not? Put that one here for now. <clears throat> Although, we shall see. Go over to here. <clears throat> this is a game I have heard of. This is called Keyflower. Looks like that. Um, don't know a lot about it. It says it is a game for two to six players played over four rounds. Each round represents a season, spring, summer, autumn, and finally winter. Each player starts the game with a home tile and an initial random team of eight blue, red, and yellow workers. So it's, it looks like a worker placement game. You've got, um, looks like you've got like a I don't know if you're going to be able to see this because I'm pretty far away from the screen as compared to. I'm going to do more in depth looks at all these things, but uh, it's got this. It's got tons of, you know, typical stuff you'd expect meeples, lots of tiles, uh, some sort of a black bag for I don't know what. Uh, it looks like a fairly simple game by Sebastian Blaisdell and Richard Breeze. Blaisdell. I've heard of Keyflower though. So I think it's a pretty good game. That's all I know. So let me put that uh, here for now. Again, I'm going to probably need to rearrange this stuff as I go along because I'm going to run out of room. Next up is something called Town Center. This is Town Center. Hopefully you can see that all right. Uh, Town Center. Congratulations, you have lobbied your local politicians, bribed the right people, threatened everyone else, and voila. You are now the mayor of your newly chartered town. Now what? Well, you're probably going to need a big, shiny office and a big, shiny building. Then you can start attracting some businesses, shops, and people who live in the soon-to-be metropolis. Town Center is a game where players, as newly minted mayors, try to build and grow their town by increasing its population and its value. So let me take a look at this one. I can tell you there's a Kickstarter stuff for this. Uh, a bag full of large wooden pieces, some small wooden pieces. Then you've got um, a tile that has a sequence of play, and then what looks like various city tiles here. There's quite a few of those. Uh, yeah, Lower Manhattan. 
Yeah. Yeah, Lower Manhattan and apparently St. Louis are included here. Uh, this is a Kickstarter, I believe. Because I have a Kickstarter, extra Kickstarter stuff someplace, which I'll get to later. But um, have you heard of Town Center? I never did. So that's Town Center. I think I'm going to start turning this stuff. I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to put this here. I think you can still barely see it. I'll put Town Center in between so you get the idea what that's that stair. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to take Mayflower down now. You've had a good chance to look at the box. You know it's behind this one for now. Or maybe I'll put it off into this. I don't think you. I don't think it's in the picture over there. Let me do this. I want to try to get most of the stuff in the picture if I can in the end. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to. It's it's that much. Let me turn Blood Rage. I know you you know it's there. So let's turn Blood Rage like this. Put Town Center here. Temple of Elemental Evil board game from Dungeons and Dragons here. Key flower, I think can go up there without any a problem. So so can the game. And Gods of Asgard, I think can go up there. And so on. Yeah, I'll put this down here. And sock it, put it down. Okay. I don't know if you'll see this stuff at the bottom. I may do some sort of an overall shot at the end, not sure. I've got so many to go through. Here's another one. This is another big one. This is War Warhammer. 40,000, I've heard of this one, Forbidden Stars, don't know anything about it, but I know it's a game that a lot of people have played. Um, I guess another big box for fan Fantasy Flight games. Uh, 14 and up, two to four players, two to three hours, this is a longer game. This has just got a ton of crap in it though. And this is another one that I believe I looked at this one. This one hasn't been played. Uh, another one that, I don't, I don't think the, if there's cards or something wasn't, I don't think it was open, let me see. Let's take a peek here, oh, I know. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty good sign right here. When you have a uh, some punchies that haven't punched, the cards look like they've been opened, but then there's a bunch of stuff in the bottom that hasn't, hasn't been opened yet. So, yeah, this has never been opened. I think you, you maybe glanced at some of the cards or something, but never played it. I've been. This is lucky. I mean, this is a, a lucky hit here. You'll see why as I get to the end. But it's already lucky. So that's Forbidden Stars. Let's do this with it, I think. Yeah, it'll be fine. Put the sock up there for now. Uh, yeah.